so now we're on chapter 13, Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity. Learning objective one is to explain sexual orientation and gender identity. Sexual orientation dimension. This dimension refers to romantic and sexual attraction. Most individuals are heterosexual and they are attracted to the opposite sex. However, there are gay and lesbian individuals who are attracted to the same sex. And there's also bisexuals who are attracted to both sexes. Transgender individuals can feel attraction to people of the same sex, opposite sex, or both sexes. There are also asexual individuals who do not feel a sexual attraction to either sex. There is also questioning individuals who question whether they are heterosexual, gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. There are also individuals who struggle with determining what sexual attraction is right for them. Um, these individuals try on different forms of sexual attraction to arrive at the one that feels more um, congruent with their internal experience. So as we talked about in chapter nine, gender relates to feeling of being male or female. Typically persons with male biology feel male and those with female biology feel female. However, there are persons with female biology who feel male and persons with male biology who may feel female. The general term transgender may apply to these individuals. There are also individuals who may feel both female and male, which is bigender, and persons who may feel neither male or female, which is agender. Placing people in definite distinct categories is difficult. It is not always easy to draw a clear distinction between a heterosexual and a person who is gay or lesbian. It may make us feel more secure and in control to cordon off the world into neat and predictable little boxes of black or white. However, in reality, the world is an endless series of shadows of gray. People frequently like to polarize others as being either heterosexual or gay or lesbian. Perhaps such labeling makes situations appear to be predictable. What does it mean to be gay or lesbian? Many theories in the past have focused on how people develop their same gender or sexual orientation by passing through a number of stages. Numerous models have been proposed, all of which tend to have several things in common. So there's almost always a predictable progression from some sort of first awareness of same gender attraction and feelings to a stage of self-labeling as being gay, lesbian, or bisexual through stages of becoming more accepting of the new identity and sharing it with only and sharing it with others to a final step of incorporating the identity into the total sense of self. The important thing may be each person's self-identification of his or her own sexual orientation. Um, an important aspect of any definition of gay or lesbian is that above all else, a gay and lesbian is a person. Many people are taught homophobia, the extreme and irrational fear and hatred of gay and lesbian people. Um, these feelings warp their perceptions of gay and lesbians. Another aspect of the definition of having a same-sex sexual orientation is that gay and lesbian people um, are attracted primarily to people of the same gender to satisfy sexual and, uh, sexual and affectional needs. Um, a gay male is attracted to and would choose to have an intimate sexual and affectional relationship with another male rather than female, and a lesbian would opt to have such an intimate involvement with another female instead of a male. Um, this part of the definition excludes people who, under certain situations, engage in same-sex se in same-sex sexual activities. For example, prisoners and other institutions institutionalized people might establish same-sex sexual relationships with others simply because persons of the opposite gender are unavailable. These people will typically return to heterosexuality when the opportunity arises. Gay men prefer the term gay instead of homosexual because it has neither the direct sexual connotation nor the demeaning implications frequently associated with the word homosexual. A bisexual person is romantically and sexually attracted to members of either gender. We talked about how um, same-sex orientation is not a clear-cut concept. Bisexuality is, is even less clearly defined. In the first major study of sexuality 
in our era, um, researchers found that it was very difficult to categorize people as homosexual, bisexual, or heterosexual. They found that people considered themselves heterosexual had had same-sex experiences at some time during their lives. For example, um, 37% of the men in the sample um, had at least one sexual experience with another male. Also, in another study with women, um, the researchers found that between 8 and 20% had some type of intimate contact between ages 20 and 35 with someone of the same sex. It's difficult, if not impossible, to state exactly how many people are gay or lesbian. However, it may be useful to consider the number of people who have adopted primarily lesbian or gay orientation over an extended period of time. So many authors have used 10% as a proportion of men who are gay. Other researchers have found that one third of American men had had homosexual experiences and only 10% of men were exclusively gay or lesbian for a three year period between ages 16 and 55 and only about 4% were gay lesbian throughout their lives. Apparently two or three times as many men as women have a same sex sexual orientation. Researchers found that 19% of American women had had same sex expressions by age 40 and only two to 3% of those remained lesbian throughout their lives. So many lesbians and gay organizations maintain that lesbians and gay make up about 10% of the population. One such organization um, is called the 10% Society. So I'm not sure if you've heard that term before. The 10% Society is referred to as the gay population. A transgendered person is someone who identifies with or expresses a gender identity that differs from one which corresponds to the person's sex at birth. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Laverne Cox, for example. She was the first African-American transgender person to appear on television and was nominated for an Emmy Award for her work in Orange is the New Black. I don't know how many of you have watched that show. Um, but she also came to campus as a speak as a guest speaker. I want to say it was last year or the year before. I can't remember, but um, my undergraduate class went to um, see her speak. Another well-known transgender person is Caitlyn Jenner. She was formerly known as Bruce Jenner, who is an American television personality and was an Olympic gold medal winner. Bruce Jenner was formerly married to Chris Jenner. And Bruce appeared on reality television series Keeping Up with the Kardashians. You may be f familiar with the whole um, journey from Bruce to Caitlyn. Um, she has been called the most famous open, the most famous openly transgender woman in the world. Um, the term transgender covers a variety of different people whose appearance and behaviors do not conform to gender roles ascribed by society to people of a particular sex. We're going to talk about the different, um, I guess, type of people or the different terms used to describe um, transgender. Um, Crossdresser, for example, is one who wears clothing intended for the opposite gender for relaxation or personal comfort. Transvestite is one who wears clothing of the opposite gender for sexual satisfaction. And it should also be noted that the term transvestite is, um, is often considered to be an offensive term, so um, I would keep from using it. Drag queen, drag king is one who wears clothing intended for the opposite um, gender for entertaining other people. Um, By gender is one whose gender identity is both female and male at the same time, and the person may exhibit aspects of both. A gender is one who has no gender identity at all. Cisgender is one whose gender identity matches the sex assigned at birth. Um, I apologize if I'm saying this incorrectly, um, but I'm not very familiar with all the terms when it comes to this population. And I've never really seen this term before, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to say it wrong. So I apologize ahead of time and, and don't mean to offend anyone. But I want to say it's androgynine. And this is one whose gender identity is somewhere in between female and male. 
and the person may exhibit some aspects of one gender and some of the other. Gender queer is one whose gender identity is completely different from female or male. Um, gender fluid is one whose gender identity can change. For most transgendered persons, gender identity does not change. Transsexual is one whose sex at birth is opposite of their gender identity. So these are just some of the terms used to describe people from the gay, lesbian population. So a transsexual is a person who has persistent desire to transition to living as and being perceived as the sex that is consistent with his or her gender identity. Typically, this desire is driven by an extreme discomfort with his or her current sex. Transgender, I'm sorry, transsexuals transitioning from male to female are often referred to as MTFs, and similarly, females to male transsexuals are frequently referred to as FTMs. Transsexual transitions are complex processes, and such transitions involve the following four processes. First, they enter counseling to make certain that they are aware of their true feelings and that they understand the potential ramifications of changing genders. Secondly, they undergo a real-life test where they actually live and undertake their daily activities as a person of the opposite gender. Third, they receive extensive hormone treatments to align their bodies with the opposite gender as much as possible, a process that may continue for the rest of their lives. For example, female to male transgender people would take male hormones to encourage facial and body hair growth, while male to female transgender people would take female hormones to encourage the softening of the body tissue and redistribution of body fat. The fourth step includes undergoing surgery, where um, genitals and other areas of the body are surgically altered to more closely resemble the opposite gender. Transgender persons are often subjective to extensive discrimination. If they come out during adolescence, they are likely to be shunned, victimized, and discriminated against by their peers. Family may present another challenge. Some of these youth experiences or experience acceptance from family, while others have great struggles. Rates of suicidal ideation and life-threatening interactions with others among transgender youth are high. Transgender youth are also at a higher risk of becoming homeless and homelessness can lead these youths to offering sex to survive, which increases the risk of sexual and physical abuse. Learning objective two um, is to review stereotypes about lesbian and gay people. Lesbian and gay people are not only victims of homophobia, but they're also targets of derogatory inaccurate stereotypes. Some of the, uh, um, some of the more common ones are that gay and lesbian people like to assume either a male or a female role and that they are potential child molesters. These are all misconceptions. They are false. Another term is the queen and butch, um, a prevalent stereotype about gay and lesbian people is that gay men typically look extremely feminine and that lesbians appear very masculine. Words that are used to refer to effeminate Gay males include swish, nelly, and queen. Words that are used to refer to masculine-looking lesbians include dyke and butch. Um, in truth, these stereotypes are not accurate in most instances. Um, and people and individuals, people are individuals with individual traits. Um, and some of these terms are considered to be offensive. The stereotypes about how gay and lesbian people look is a result of confusion between two central concepts. Gender identity refers to a person's internal psychological self-concept of either being male or female. Sexual orientation refers to one's erotic, romantic, and affectionate attraction to the same gender, to the opposite gender, or to both. So these concepts should not be confused. For example, whether a man prefers to have sexual relations with another man has nothing to do with his or her own feelings that he is a man. Um, most gay men think of themselves as being men. They, don't, they do not think of themselves as being women, nor do they want to become women. Um, therefore, a gay man can look and act like any other man, yet still be attracted to men. So gender identity and sexual orientation should not be confused with respect to um, women either. So a woman may feel like a woman and still 
think of herself as a woman, yet still be attracted to women. Another common stereotype about gay and lesbian people is that in any particular pair, one will choose a masculine dominant role and the other a feminine submissive role. As with most heterosexual couples, this is usually not the case. Another derogatory stereotype targeting gay and lesbian people is that they are inclined to molest children. This stereotype is especially damaging to gay lesbian teachers in that it can cause them to lose their jobs. In reality, the majority of all child molesting is done to young girls by heterosexual men, usually people trusted and close to them. Heterosexual men are 11 times more likely to um, be child molesters than are gay men. Learning objective three is to discuss conceptual frameworks concerning sexual orientation. The biological theories attempting to explain same-sex sexual orientation can be clustered under three headings. Genetic, anatomical, which includes the brain, and hormonal. So they are based on the idea that same-sex sexual orientation is caused by physiological factors over which individuals have no control. The genetic explanation for same-sex orientation supports the idea that people's sexuality is programmed through their genes. Researchers found that when they studied identical twins, they found that when one identical twin was gay, 52% of the time their twin brother was also gay. But in the case of fraternal twins, only 22% of the pairs were both gay. And when the brothers were adopted, both brothers were gay in only 11% of the time. So researchers concluded that this provides evidence for a genetic link. Another study looked at 108 lesbians who had either identical or fraternal twin sisters and another 32 lesbians who had adopted sisters. They found that among almost half of the identical twins, both were lesbians. However, only 16% of fraternal twins and 6% of the unrelated sisters were both lesbians. So these results also support the idea of a genetic component to same-sex sexual orientation. So in another study, um, it was found that a marble-sized cluster of cells that regulate sexual activity um, in addition to appetite and body temperature in gay men was only half the size that of in heterosexual men. Um, More recent studies also found that brain differences, specifically in the cerebral hemisphere of heterosexual and homosexual men and women, Um, Yet, it's unknown whether such variations were present at birth or if they arose at some point after that. Um, Additionally, there's no evidence that exists to confirm that such differences were directly related to sexual orientation. Therefore, at present, there are no clearly established brain differences related to sexual orientation. When it comes to hormonal factors, um, hormonal theories of heterosexuality suggest that hormonal type and level cause homosexuality. Research has established no relationship between hormonal levels and sexual orientation either during the prenatal period or in adulthood. Psychosocial or behavioral theories suggest that same-sex sexual behavior is learned just as any other type of behavior is learned. So early in life, same-sex sexual behavior may be positively may be positively reinforced by pleasurable experiences and therefore strengthened or such behavior may be punished by negative um, experiences and as a result may be weakened. Um, The answer to why people are gay um, is a multifaceted one. Genetic rationales have major shortcomings. For example, we talked about how um, research was done with the identical twins, but some researchers, so some researchers um, indicate genetic rationales explain some Some component, the answer to why people are gay is multifaceted. Um, Genetic rationales have major shortcomings. For example, we discussed the research findings concerning identical twins. If, as some researchers indicate, genetic rationales explain some components or percentages of why people are gay, then what explains the remaining components or percentages? If people are gay or lesbian because of some hormonal impact, why aren't all people lesbian or gay who experience similar hormonal impacts? 
At least two major shortcomings can be cited with respect to psychosocial theories. First, there is a tremendous amount of negative feedback about same-sex sexual orientation. Children learn early that being called a fag is not a compliment. How same-sex sexual behavior would be reinforced and would increase in frequency in view of such punitive circumstances might be questioned. Second, learning theory implies that a person must first have a same-sex sexual experience. Then, if the experience was positively reinforcing or personally rewarding, the person would seek out more such experiences. However, might it not be the case that individuals who have same-sex sexual desires seek out sexual experiences with the same gender in the first place? In other words, might not the desire for sexual contact with the same gender be there even before any actions ever occur? Storms has proposed a theory that focuses on the interaction of biological predisposition and the effects of the environment. He poses that development of same-sex sexual orientation is um, related to the rate at which people mature during pre-adolescence. Children tend to play and interact with people of the same gender during pre-adolescence, um, and this same-sex interaction reaches its peak at about age 12, after which heterosexual interactions begin to develop. Heterosexual dating may start around age 15. Um, Storm suggests that the sex drive for some people emerges earlier than for others. So if children who mature earlier are still in the same-sex groupings, they may have um, positive sexual experiences with people of the same gender during this time. They may develop a pattern whereby they remain oriented towards the same gender and then they never become interested sexually in the opposite gender. If these children happen to have positive sexual same-sex experiences, they may continue with the same sexual orientation. Um, and then if early maturers do not have these experiences, they continue later to develop a heterosexual orientation as they begin um, interacting with people of the opposite gender. So many experts agree that gay lesbian orientation probably results from some mixture of both biological and psychosocial variables. Um, there is still no clearly established reason for why people are lesbians or gay. Some lesbian and gay people have expressed ethical, ethical concerns regarding um, providing any theory about same-sex sexual orientation involving a biological component. On one hand, many express relief at the thought that others might consider their same-sex sexual orientation not to be their own fault. If there's a medical basis, the general public might become more accepting of gay or lesbians. Um, researchers found that people were generally more accepting of lesbian and gay people if they felt such people were born that way instead of choosing or learning that lifestyle. On the other hand, if specific genetic or hormonal ingredients are found for same-sex sexual orientation, lesbian and gay people might be considered defective by society at large. Um, taking this one step farther, society at large may decide to make biological corrections prenatally. Other research found no relationship between being gay and having been seduced by a person of the same gender when younger. Um, the researchers found no ultimate answers, but they did identify some interesting aspects of being lesbian or gay. Three findings are of special significance. First, sexual orientation appears to emerge by the time both males and females reach adolescence. This is the case even when people have little or no sexual experience. Second, Lesbian and gay people have similar amounts of heterosexual experiences during childhood and adolescents when compared to heterosexual people. There is one basic difference, however. Although lesbian and gay people participate in heterosexual activity, they do not enjoy it very much. The third major finding of the study involves the concept of gender nonconformity, which appears to begin in childhood for gay males and lesbians. Gender nonconformity refers to a child's preference for play and activities that our society generally considers appropriate for children of the opposite sex or of the opposite gender. For example, little girls usually choose to play with Barbie dolls and play dishes, whereas little boys generally prefer G.I. Joes or um, bulldo toy bulldozers. A little girl who only plays with tanks and footballs or a little boy who only plays with Barbie would be examples of gender nonconformity. 
Um, the research indicates that sexual orientation develops very early in life. It also suggests that whether a person is gay or lesbian or heterosexual is not a matter of choice. Learning objective four is to address discrimination and the impacts of homophobia. Um, so our common language is filled with derogatory terms referring to lesbian and gay people. Um, just as other diverse groups, they are subjects to stereotypes and discrimination. Um, because of negative attitudes and resulting discriminatory behavior, alternatives for lesbian and gay people are often different and limited. There are often other negative consequences. Other non-sexually related aspects of their lives are affected because of their sexual orientation. For example, a male third grade teacher may live in fear that the parents of his students will discover he's living with another man. He loves his job that he's had for nine years. If parents put pressure on the school administration about his same-sex orientation, he may get fired. He may never get another teaching job again. Another example is provided by a female college student who expends massive amounts of energy to disguise that she's a lesbian. She attends a state university in a small Midwestern rural town. She's terribly lonely. She keeps hoping that the special someone will walk into her life. However, she doesn't dare let her friends know that she's a lesbian or really will be isolated. There wouldn't be anyone to talk to or to go to dinner with. They would never understand. People have committed suicide for less. Lesbian and gay people are frequently the victims of homophobia. So homophobia is described as the extreme and irrational fear and hatred of gay and lesbian people. People with same gender sexual orientation have historically been discriminated against. Um, in the U.S. military, religious, uh, mental health, medical, and other institutions as well. Some feel that the term homophobia is too strong because the word phobia means an intense and persistent fear of an object or situation. Anti-homosexual or anti-gay um, stance, prejudice, or discrimination might be alternative terms. Um, in reality, homophobia is likely a continuum. People probably vary markedly on the depth of their negative feelings. Learning objective five is to describe lesbian and gay lifestyles. Um, individual relationships and lifestyles vary among gay and lesbian just as much as they do among heterosexuals. As with heterosexuals, many lesbian and gay people live in a significant live with a significant other. Um, others live by themselves or with a heterosexual partner, friend, children, or family. Additionally, many have children. Same-sex couples face many of the same issues and hold many of the same values of their um, heterosexual counterparts. So the diversity characterizing heterosexual couples is also reflected in same-sex couples. Major social and legal obstacles do exist that prevent lesbian and gay people from establishing long-term relationships. Um, for example, gay and lesbian marriages are a hotly debated issue. Even if gays and lesbians are very much in love with each other and want to spend their lives together, social obstacles might exist. The fact is, lesbian and gay people engage in the same types of activities that heterosexuals enjoy. The physiological responses of gay and lesbian people are exactly the same as those of her. The physiological responses of gay and lesbian people are exactly the same as those of heterosexuals. Learning objective six is to explore significant issues and life events for lesbian and gay people. As member of a diverse group, lesbian and gay people are victims of stereotypes um, and homophobia. Discrimination may frequently limit the alternatives available to them. Social workers and other human service professionals need to be aware of the special issues and the life events confronting lesbian and gay people so that they might provide leadership in improving service delivery. In order to help clients define and evaluate the alternatives available to them, social workers must understand the effects of certain life events. LGBT people suffer discrimination in terms of employment, housing, public accommodation, education, medical care, and um, several other areas because they're not legally protected. Um, this was not until the federal government changed to forbid discrimination against lesbian and gay people in hiring or terminations unless 
the public agency involved could prove that same-sex sexual behavior affected their work. Um, this means that most federal government agencies cannot discriminate against lesbians and gay people purely on the basis of their sexual orientation. Um, however, these rules don't apply to state or local jobs. For example, police departments and public schools have often succeeded in driving out lesbian and gay employees. Discrimination occurs in a wide range of settings. Um, one gay married man was recently offered a job um, as food services director at a Catholic girls school. The school rescinded the offer two days later when an administrator noted that the man indicated on a form that his husband should be the emergency contact. The man allegedly was told that he couldn't be hired because the church did not recognize gay marriage. Other than for federal government jobs, there are no federal st statutes that prohibit employers from discriminating against lesbian and gay people in the private sector. Major progress has been made in implementing anti-discrimination policies in corporate America. Although this progress is not reflected in many small businesses and organizations, most Fortune 500 companies have non-discrimination policies that include sexual orientation, and a majority of these companies have policies that incorpor incorporate non-discrimination involving gender identity. The military has also seen some discrimination as well. So historically, gay and lesbian people have been prohibited from joining the CIA, the FBI, and even the armed forces. Leonard Matlovich provides one of the most publicized examples of discrimination against gay and lesbian people by the military. Um, as the son of an Air Force sergeant, uh, Matlovich was raised on Air Force bases. Upon his high school graduation, he, imme he immediately joined the Air Force. He received numerous decorations for his service, which included fighting in Vietnam. He was also labeled superior in his evaluations. Um, years later, at age 30, Matlovich acknowledged that he was gay and became involved in gay activities. When he told this to his supervisors or his superiors, he was discharged with a general discharge, which is a type of discharge considered less than honorable. Um, he eventually took his case to court and he later collected um, $160,000 in back pay when the Air Force could not reboot his claim to an exemption from the non-gay policy. In 1993, President Clinton announced a plan to revoke the 50-year ban on gay and lesbian people in the military. However, Congress um, eroded the plan and the final version entailed an uncomfortable don't ask, don't tell, don't pursue guideline. So this meant that military personnel were supposed to pretend with an out of sight, out of mind approach that same sex sexual behavior didn't exist. Uh, many questions were raised regarding the policy. Under the so-called don't ask, don't tell policy, 13,000 service members were fired or discharged. Um, many of them specialists who were critical to military operations. These included healthcare specialists, combat engineers, law enforcement agents, security guards. So because they couldn't tell that they were gay or lesbian, they couldn't cite their partners as next of kin if something happened to them. And their partners were not beneficiaries of supportive services provided to heterosexual partners and families. Um, at times, many partners were left hanging regarding whether their loved ones were alive, hurt, or dead. In 2010, President Barack Obama repealed, um, or repealed the don't ask, don't tell policy. Um, the repeal finally went into effect September 2011. By that time, almost 2 million service members had been trained in preparation for the disclosure of sexual orientation by lesbian and gay military personnel. Some estimate that at least 2% of service members are lesbians, gay, or bisexual. Many gay and lesbian service members express relief that they um, may be open about their relationships without being discharged. However, many others remain fearful of negative re repercussions if they come out to others. Um, there has been several incidents of derogatory comments and jokes. One female officer was dancing with her partner at a military ball. A senior officer commanded the women to stop dancing. When the women refused, the senior officer shoved them off the floor. 
The female officer filed a complaint. The Pentagon investigated it and the senior officer was removed from his position um, and compelled to retire. So a major positive aspect of the policy concerning openness is the fact that the spouse of gays and lesbians in the military may now receive spousal benefit. The right of lesbian and gay people to marry legally in the U.S. has been a hotly debated issue. A major change occurred in June 2013 when the U.S. Supreme Court struck down major aspects of the Federal um, Defense of Marriage Act. In 2013, the court ruled that same-sex marriages must be accepted by the federal government and that such couples should receive all the federal benefits available to heterosexual couples. These benefits included social security, survivor benefits, immigration rights, and family leave. They also included federal tax benefits such as filing joint federal tax returns. Um, however, federal agencies may determine which same-sex marriages are eligible for benefits. For example, some agencies such as the IRS will recognize all same-sex marriages, whereas the Social Security Administration takes into consideration that the couple's state residence and whether that state recognizes same-sex marriage or not. In 2013, decision um, that the Supreme Court did not force states to accept gay marriages, but rather had them make their own decisions. In the past, lesbian and gay parents have experienced major difficulties in custody debates over their children because of their sexual orientation. Numerous courts have denied parents custody simply because they were lesbian or gay. Um, some judges may have homophobic ideas which have a potential of influencing their decisions. There's also several myths about lesbian and gay parenthood um, that might influence people against lesbian and gay parents. First, there is the misconception that lesbian or gay parents will influence their children to become gay or lesbians. No verification exists for this myth. Second, there is an idea that children will be damaged by growing up in a lesbian or gay home. Um, all indications are that children growing up in such households flourish as well as those raised in heterosexual homes. Third, some people mistakenly believe that gay and, lesbians, gay and lesbian people's parenting skills are inadequate. No evidence bears this out. Finally, research indicates that fears about children with lesbian or gay parents experiencing difficulties in peer relationships, having inadequate social skills, or enjoying less popularity than peers with heterosexual parents are also unsupported. Although lesbian and gay people are sometimes not treated equally under the law, the great progress that has been made um, should be emphasized. Same-sex couples in the U.S. and in many other countries now have the legal right to marry. Some states and localities are adopting equal housing and employment legislation for lesbian and gay people. Homosexuality is no longer considered a psychiatric illness. Federal government agencies should no longer be able to discriminate against gay and lesbian people. In June 2016, homophobic Omar Mateen shot and killed 49 people in Orlando um, at a gay nightclub. In addition, 53 people were injured. Um, the incident was the deadliest mass shootings in American history. Mateen was killed in a gun battle with SWAT team members. Another example, um, in October, Matthew Shepard, a gay college student, um, was pistol whipped, beaten, and left tied to a fence near um, Wyoming um, for 18 hours. He died of his injuries four days later. So apparently, um, the men only intended to rob Shepard, but they found out about they found out about his sexual orientation, so they drove so that drove them to violence. Hate crimes are those motivated by hatred of someone's religion, their sex, race, sexual orientation, disability, or ethnic group. So when it comes to violence against LGBT people, um, research shows that 70 to 80 percent of lesbians and gay men reported experiencing verbal abuse in public because of their sexuality. 30 to 40 percent reported threats of violence. 20 percent of gay men reported physical violence. 10 to 12 percent of lesbians reported physical violence. Seven types of victimization has been noted um, when it comes to violence against the LGBT community. Verbal harassment, which occurs most frequently, threatening behavior such as being followed by harassers or being um, warned that attacks are forthcoming, 
physical attacks by groups of men which can result in emotional and physical injury, assaults associated with AIDS, than, and the resentment towards gay and lesbian people related to it, sexual assaults of women and men, assaults and discrimination by police, and even murder. Homophobia seems to form the foundation for these attacks. So what can be done to stop the victimization against LGBT people? So researchers propose four potential solutions. First, LGBT civil rights legislation must be passed. Um, discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation must be clearly illegal. Second, involves the passage of laws that specifically address crimes committed because of hatred and prejudice towards specific groups. Third proposal involves educating the police and people working in the criminal justice system about homophobia and LGBT victimization, as well as the needs and rights of gay people. Um, and finally, for combating LGBT victimization is to establish crisis centers for victims. Coming out of the closet or coming out refers to the process of a person's acknowledging publicly that he or she is gay or lesbian. It is frequently a long and difficult process. Lesbian and gay people today usually become aware that they are different from most others in terms of sexual orientation before the age of 20. For some people, it may take much longer and they may come out later on in life. For many people, especially adolescents who do not have much independence and are subject to severe peer pressure, the coming out period may be very difficult. One way to describe coming out is to identify the four stages involved. Um, these stages are coming out to oneself, getting to know other people within the gay and lesbian community, sharing with family and friends that one is lesbian or gay, and then coming out of the closet that is openly and publicly acknowledging one's sexual orientation. When it comes to ethnicity and sexual orientation, it is important that social workers assess the impact these differences in ethnic and racial background may have on clients. Lesbian and gay adolescents have to deal with not only their identity development in general, but also their identities as lesbians or gay males in a heterosexual world. Um, lesbian and gay adolescents are up to four times more likely to attempt suicide than their heterosexual counterparts. A major suggestion for working with lesbian and gay youth is to avoid minimizing or denying the person's developing identity and sexual relationship or sexual orientation. Three principles should guide social workers when trying to help lesbian and gay youth. First, they need to acknowledge that some adolescents, perhaps many with whom you work and come into contact with, are gay or lesbian. Second, they need to increase their own awareness and that of their agency regarding how to provide accessible services to lesbian and gay youth. Third, um, do not allow anti-gay homophobic sentiments to get in the way of providing lesbian and gay youth with services that they may need. Many lesbian and gay people have children. Uh, many have them from prior marriages. Others choose new fertility methods. Many lesbian and gay people have children. Even when a lesbian or gay parent gains custody of a child, there still may be problems to overcome. For instance, lesbian and gay parents must deal with the oncoming discrimination um, and social censure they may face because of their sexual orientation. So there are several suggestions made for social workers and other human service professionals in their efforts to help lesbian and gay people cope with parenthood. First, social workers can help the lesbian or gay parent identify and appreciate the joys of parenthood. Um, second, social workers can help lesbian and gay parents address the issue of coming out to their children. And a third way social workers can assist lesbian or gay parents is to involve dealing with new partners. So when a lesbian or gay parent finds a partner and decides to live with him or her, a social worker can help that parent address many of the same issues that need to be dealt with with the new heterosexual partner who joins the household. AIDS um, was discussed in depth in chapter 10. Um, and although initially many people labeled it as a gay disease, it is now spreading among, among heterosexuals at a greater rate than among gays. Gay people also took major steps to initiate a massive campaign aimed at prevention. Any social worker who works with a gay or lesbian client needs to be aware of the ramifications and emotional impacts AIDS has had. Those close to the client have likely dealt with many of the economic and social issues involved with AIDS. And this concludes chapter 13. Next week we'll cover chapter 14.